This is the second video in a series on setting up a character to use Human IK in Maya 2012. Uh, in this video I'm going to set up the skeleton. and I'm going to use the Human IK skeleton generator to do this, but know that you can do this um, yourself using the skeleton joint tool uh, and just uh, putting all the joints where you want them. But then you have to go th through the characterization process, which is basically uh, you telling Maya what the name of your joint is and associating that with what the human IK system expects. It's not a hard process, but in this case, there's no reason to go through it. I like the skeleton generator, and I'm just going to show that method. So go under Window, Animation Editors, Human IK, and then Skeleton Generator. First step here, create a new uh, character. So that'll uh, create a skeleton automatically here. Uh, you can see there's a big scale difference, which we'll take care of in just a minute. First thing I'm going to do is rename this skeleton to um, make sense for my character. And it takes care of all the naming for you. So you can see here that everything will get prepended, whatever the name is, which is pretty sweet. OK, so now just to talk about scale really quickly. Um, you don't want to work too small because you can have near clip plane issues, you can have precision issues, um, that sort of thing. You don't want to work too large because you can have far clip planing issues and uh, in some cases you might have trouble with uh, simulations and that sort of thing. So just finding something in the middle um, is what you want. Um, if you haven't already preset um, a scale and modeled to that scale, um, it, which in my case I haven't, I just modeled sort of an arbitrary scale. I'm going to go ahead and scale my character up to match the default scale of the uh, skeleton. Not meaning I'm going to stretch my character out, but just I'm going to pick something to match. So I'm going to go ahead and select my uh, character at the group level, and then I'll just scale the character up to match the arm width of the skeleton generated. So something like that looks about right. And then I want to put the character on the ground. And make sure that he's standing on the actual ground plane. So I'll turn my grid back on here. And I'm just going to use shift middle click to move that up since I can't see the manipulator. And I just want to make sure my character is actually standing on the ground. The reason for this is uh, the human IK system has a floor uh, tool that you can use. And uh, you just want your character already to be set um, at the origin here. Okay, so that's got my uh, skeleton in place, um, and net, or to scale rather, and now I want to move the skeleton down. So I'm just going to select the hips, uh, move it down so that the arms more or less come to the center. I can't really see this all that clearly, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on uh, x-ray joints. So just shading x-ray joints, and now I can see my joints right through. Again, from the front, this is easy to tell that I have this actually aligned properly. So I'll just line it up something like that, where it's around the center of the arms. And I'll just double check this from the side. And what I want to do is just have this set up where um, it's more or less running down the center of the arm, the center of the leg. Something like this looks totally fine. Okay, And uh, then I'd want to start positioning everything so that <coughs> I can... Uh, get the hips in the right place, shrink up the spines a little bit. I'll have to move everything around basically to fit my character here. And then I'll need to go through and, and orient all these joints after the fact since I'm moving them all over the place. Um, okay, so the first thing I need to do is go ahead and, and uh, compress up the spine here. But I've already got the arms where I want them. And if I try to move this, it's going to move everything. So what you need to do is move it in the pivot point uh, mode. So just hold D down and then just slide this up uh, and then I'll just keep doing that uh, down the chain here just so I have a little bit more room to move and move this up to some place like this and the real purpose of that is I'm trying to move the thigh up because I want the thigh to affect more up to here or so so now I'm not going to use D I'm just going to use the regular move I'm going to put, put that to the center of the leg and move it up to about where I think the leg should be started so somewhere around here looks pretty good. Let's check this from the side. And uh, probably what I'll do is just bring that knee forward just a little bit. So this looks good here, and I'll just bring the knee out and forward, and then the ankle back just a little bit. The um, Human IK system does expect you to be um, facing positive Z. Um, your character should uh, face positive Z, so toes, nose, and thumbs pointing down Z. Uh, your uh, arms in the T-pose should be perpendicular to the x-axis of the world. 
And your legs should be more or less straight up and down, but a little bit of a bend is, uh, is totally fine. So uh, that looks fine. So again, I'll do this maybe from the side view. Move this up to about where it looks like it needs to go. And you might find that wireframe unshaded also is a, is a benefit here. So I'll turn on wireframe unshaded. And now I can see, you know, I had sort of pre-planned this joint to, to land around here. So it has um, some spans on either side of it for me to bend against. So that looks good. And then again from the side, move this up. This is the ankle, so, um, and this is looking rather short, um, but this, again, this character just sort of has some sort of odd proportions. So I'm gonna try to move this up just a little bit, give myself a little bit more space here so that the, you can actually tell when the shin moves. Uh, ankle position looks pretty good here. And I want this toe to come out uh, and probably for the, the crush to happen between these two spans in here. So something like this is about right. Um, rule of thumb might be close to two-thirds behind the, um, the ball of the foot, something like that. And then I may have been a little extreme with how much I pulled this out. So I'm just going to go ahead and settle this back just a little bit. I want this to be more or less straight. Something like that looks pretty good. Okay. Um, and I am working only on the left side of my character because I'm just going to mirror this over to the right side. And when I say the left side of the character, I mean um, from the character's possession um, perspective, the left side of the character, not the left side of the screen, which would be over here to the right. It works from the character's left to the character's right. So that looks good for, for this. Uh, my spine joints look okay. Um, I might as well just go ahead and take a look at the head here since that's a quick one to, to deal with. Uh, my character doesn't even have a neck so I can just drop out the neck. That's a not essential um, item for um, human IK. So this skeleton generator won't let you remove the, um, the joints that it requires. So that's another advantage of using this tool is you don't have to go through and double check that you have everything. You can't remove the joints that, you, that it requires from here. So you, you could, for instance, take your shoulders out if you didn't want shoulders, you could drop them out completely here. But in my case, and in most cases, it's probably a good idea to have some shoulder in here so that you can um, you know, have the, this part of the body move up and down as the arm moves up and down. Okay, um, so my spine count actually is probably fine. So uh, I'm just going to talk very briefly about what I would do with the clavicle. Um, the clavicle I want to have a little bit of an arc so that at its widest point is when the arm's down, not when it's up in the up position. At this position, the clavicle has already been engaged and moved up some. Uh, so I mean, just move this down and, and hopefully this will be clear. This is pretty close to what I would do with this at this position. So if you think about the arc that this would have, and I can even just put it on there like this. So think of the yellow line here being the arc of this joint. So see now if this comes out to a flat, like following the, the green here, it would actually come out very slightly from where it is right now, which is um, more of what I want it to do. As the clavicle comes down, the shoulder comes out very slightly. If I let this flat straight across right here, then as the clavicle came down for the arms to come down, the shoulders would actually squeeze in a little bit and it looks a little bit weird on characters. So as your arm comes down, it should widen out um, a little bit. So this is what I think uh, works better for um, anatomically correct anyways. So you can go uh, bigger than this or, or less than this, but this is the method that I found works well. Okay, and then I'm just going to move these to wherever they make sense. The shoulder needs to come out um, a bit from, from where it was by default. Uh, potentially even up a little bit here. Something like that would probably be around, about right. Move the elbow back to that span that I had designated here. Uh, grab the wrist, slide that guy back into place. And now I'm ready to start making changes to the hand. Uh, it has a lot of extra fingers. I have this giant mitt of a hand. I only need basically one joint chain to take care of that. So I'll just drop out um, these and just leave leave myself one to deal with here. And then I need some joints for the thumb. Okay. Um, so what I'll do with the thumb here is <clears throat> move this to wherever that first joint should start. It's not in a bad place right there, so I'll just leave it. I'll move this one 
out the first joint of the thumb is actually um, pretty long and then grab the next joint maybe out to around here and then this one which is this is a joint that I'm not actually going to weight anything to at all uh, this is just an end of chain uh, joint so I'll just keep moving these to till I feel um, the proportions look about right so that looks fine right there so again I'll have this joint this joint and this joint and I won't use this one this is just the end of the chain and in this case I'll just go ahead and roll that down um, so it matches where it should go through the thumb like that let me look at that from the top really quick because that looks a little odd looks like I um, misjudged sometimes it's difficult to tell from just the pr perspective of what you got going on um, looks like maybe this should be back a little bit so I'm gonna have to manually come through and uh, freeze and orient those joints I'll cover that in the next video actually okay move this out to end of the hand here around there again this is just an end of chain I'm not actually gonna weight anything to that okay so that looks pretty good um, looks like things are where they should be or where I intended for the, uh, them to be when I set up the topology so I'm just gonna select the skeleton here go to the blue button edit and then mirror left to right so that gets my skeleton completely set up and ready to go the only thing left is um, orienting the joints which I'll go over in the next video this video is just getting a little bit on the long side so I'm gonna leave it here for this one